Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are watching the station identification of one of Whalen City's resident YouTubers. Live in the basement, this is not MTV's remote control, and he is not Ken Ober, God rest Ken Ober's soul. This is WEML-TV, channel 77, and now here's your host, New Bedford, Massachusetts' own Mr. Eric M. Lima. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Mr. Announcer, for that special, uh, for that decent introduction. My name is Eric Lima, and you are watching WEML TV Channel 77, Episode 375, my last video of the day. Just so I'm very, very pleased to announce that my car has been all fixed up. I was very, very concerned because the brakes on my car got really, really bad. I mean, it got worse as the days go on, and I think uh, I felt like I overdid it driving it when driving the car with the bad brakes when I was driving to a stop and shop because I had to pick up a new belt for my pants because the the, the belt for the pants for the pants I wore to work have uh, been uh, the buckle of it has been broken off so I had to go get a new one and I thought I lost the brakes there but I want to thank my father and my brother-in-law Jesse for helping uh, my father Charlie and my brother-in-law Jesse um, Alexander and my father Charlie Lima for uh, fixing it for me. I do appreciate them and uh, they, they're experts in cars. And, you know, my father had a passion for cars since he was a kid, since he was 11 years old, and has that awesome experience. And just goes when uh, I know probably wishes I had experience with cars like him and have something in common with him. But you know, things don't go the way you want them. But but thankfully enough, um, I got you know. I, I told I told some of my fr friends that I trust my father and my brother-in-law, so I do, so I'm very very thankful for both of them, as um, they're good with the car and they're ready to go. All right, and it's ready to go. I'll be able to drive it over the weekend, so uh, and all that good stuff. So it is it is good, and uh, I tell you one thing that I think the wet weather start you know started to make things worse, unfortunately. And, you know so I'm going to be very very careful backing out if I'm going to go down our street I may have to go up our street a little bit make a three-point turn in someone else's driveway to go back to go back down and because <laughs> parking on um, parking on the grass with the with the, in that area there it's just it, it can't I won't do any I can't do that anymore or I have to go up our street take a right on another street and go back down another street next door i don't know it's it's life is crazy man life is just crazy and just you know it is something it, it is something and this the uh, first half of this week has been crazy already to say the least um a lot of uh you know a lot of revelations come from a former an individual a former uh podcast leader so to speak and i'm not going to get into any, any of that um so so I won't because we need to get I need to be entertaining we're gonna have some fun I can relax a little bit breathe easy let's do this okay uh, AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest night one has happened uh, I'll tell you one thing the crowds remember tomorrow we got impact wrestling and then and I get I gotta renew my peacock uh, subscription so I can um, watch NXT UK but here's another thing, SmackDown, this Friday night, not only is the final SmackDown um, before Money in the Bank, but it's also the first SmackDown with a live crowd. I'm really excited about that. So, so let's, let's see how the fans are going to react to that. Alright, so AEW, uh, Fighter Fest Night 1 of seven, uh, the 14th, so here we go. Uh, the IWGP United States title is on the line, and they're going by IWGP rules since it is a t the titles in the territory. John Moxley, the champion, defended it against uh, Carl Anderson, and it started off like a couple of brawls because Luke Don Gallows, um, Luke Gallows was getting involved, and so did um, so did Eight Kingston. Both big men brawled in the t towards the back, and then. Both men fought. It was a hard-fought matchup. I'm sure they fought each other in the WWE. 
And in the end, Moxley did retain the title. That prompted Lance Archer and Jake Roberts to talk about this and uh, challenged Moxley to the, for the title in a Texas death match. And a little bit more on that matchup. Alex Abrahantes was interviewing Andrade El Idolo. And Idolo says, Alex, I'm looking for the death triangle. That will be Pac, Phoenix, and, and Penta El Sierra Miedo. It seems like um, he's got his design set on him. And remember, the elite, the super elite did t take out the death triangle. So it'll be something to uh, watch out for. The FTW World Heavyweight title on the line. Brian Cage to defend against Ricky Starks. This matchup started out pretty good until um, Hook and Hobbs got involved. And Hobbs hit Cage with the belt. And in the end, Ricky Starks is the new FTW champion. So that means it's Brian Cage out of Team Taz. He might as well be. Because I think Brian Cage will be livid. But that's okay. And we're probably going to say, I don't need the FTW title. I'm moving on. Who knows for sure. But then... They um, replayed of what happened to uh, Arn Anderson. So Cody Rhodes got upset with that and then called out Malachi Black. And so Malachi Black responds to Rhodes and both men had a brawl to the point where officials and referees separated these two gentlemen. I'll tell you one thing. Malachi Black and Cody Rhodes. Malachi Black is Tommy and a.k.a. Alistair Black. Just to let you know. I'm sure a lot of people know that already. So Alex Marvez was interviewing Tully Blanchard about what happened to Conan and then Santana, Nort Santana and Ortiz confront him and he says and then they uh, messed with him with a fake fake crowbar and he said and they said it's fake next time it's gonna be real you better bring your boys and then so uh, so the inner circle pinnacle feud continues Tony Schiavone um, interviewed Hangman Adam Page, Page and Hangman Adam Page was about to issue the challenge to Kenny Omega for the AEW title until that idiot, Don Jackass Callis, I'm not going to call him a jackal, comes out, you ain't doing anything. If I, if I was Don, if Don Callis ever started interrupting me, I would have thrown a dodgeball right into his face. Boom, knock him out cold. Anyways, so, anyways, the interrupt page, then the elite, the super elite came out, and uh, Kenny Omega said, hey, how about this? Okay, Megan and him about to exchange words, and then uh, Hangman, pa Hangman Page punched Omega, punched one of the young bucks, and then everybody starts getting involved, and then Kenny Omega is about to attack, but then the Dark Order gets involved. So Omega goes, "Okay, how about this? Five of my guys versus five of your guys." Dark Order versus the Super Elite. And if the Dark Order wins, not only Hangman Adam Page gets a world title shot, but two members of the Dark Order can get a tag team title shot. So Page goes, you're on. So there's that. And then Alex Marvis interviewed Chris Jericho. And and then Chris Jericho go to five trials of Jericho, I believe. And then Sean Spears attacks Jericho and NBA, MJF decided... Talk trash to Jericho said, hey, your first matchup will be against Sean Spears, but here's a here's a crazy thing, is that he gets to use a chair and you don't. So if Sean Spears gets to use a chair and Chris Jericho does not, dude, he doesn't have to use a steel chair. MJF, you're an idiot. You should have you should have thought this one through, MJF, you idiot. Jericho can't use a chair, but he can use another weapon. Uh So, anyways, MJF is a total idiot. I'm telling you, this is going to backfire on, 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 on the pinnacle here. Matt Hardy and Christian, a 23-year feud, um, came out ahead. And he kept the private party and uh, Angelico in the back. But then, in the end, uh, it was a great matchup. In the end, Christian Cage hit the kill switch. Christian Cage won the matchup. A private party and Angelico came back to attack him. But Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus aid Christian Cage. And I think it's going to be a really, really cool thing to see the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage join forces. Miro cut a promo as a TNT champion, and who's going to stop Miro? And if Lana, a.k.a. C.J. Perry, joins him, I think the sky's the limit for and joins her husband to manage him, I think the sky's the limit for Miro. 
But I wouldn't be surprised if Kip Sabian comes back and attacks Miro for sure. Uh, Tony Schiavone, well, interviewed once again. Uh, Dr. Brick Baker, DMD, the AEW Women's World Champion, cut a promo on Nyla Rose. And for that, Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero respond. Then, Mo then John Moxley cut a promo on um, Archer and accepted the challenge for a Texas, Texas Death Match next week, Fighter Fest 2, Night 2, for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. Wheeler, Utah went one on one with Sammy Guevara. Utah has been joining forces with the best friends. And which it was a heck of a matchup, but Guevara wins in the end while the Blade and Bunny were watching in the crowd. Tony Schiavone, well, this guy's been all over the place. Uh, interviewed QT Marshall and the Factories, Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado, which I call QT Fire, uh, QT Marshall, QT Fire Marshall Bill. And he said, Why are you dissing me all of a sudden? He goes, You know what? And he, and he was, was kidding around about pouring the drink and then he pours the drink on him anyways. And you're lucky, you know, Tony Schiavone was, had to keep his anger in check, which is very, very tough. Penelope Poor went one-on-one -on -one with the magical girl Yuka Sakazaki. It was a great, it was a pretty decent matchup overall, but in the end, Yuka Sakazaki did pick up the victory over Penelope Ford. Yuka Sakazaki's first uh, match in AEW in 18 years. Remember, the pandemic has really separated a lot of people. And then they had the AEW Rampage from on Friday night starting August the 13th. And then the main event was a coffin match. We haven't seen one of these coffin matches since The Undertaker retired from England competition in the WWE. In fact, what was the last time there was a coffin match or a casket match in, in wrestling and on TV? What? We're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to put check the date on that. But recent, this is the recent one coffin match. Darby Allen, Ethan Page just works like a regular casket match in the WWE. Um, the two fought up, and then uh, Scorpio Sky emerged from the casket, starts beating up on Darby Allen, and Sting gets involved. And then it was down Darby Allen, Ethan Page. In the end, Darby Allen put Ethan Page in that stupid in that coffin and slammed the lid shut. And he's stupid because Ethan Page was stupid. So all eagle. Ethan Page loser, that's for sure. Alrighty then, um, let's see what else. What else is that? And that's it. That's all the time we have on the show tomorrow night. Impact Wrestling. I think it's the final Impact before Slammiversary. This could be the worst night in Kenny Omega's life. I'm not so sure. Um, also, what else is t all tomorrow? Tomorrow, rant and rave. Join me. My, join myself, Brandon Jordan, and the rest of the crew, uh, and, and Michael. And whoever shows up uh, tomorrow at six, and also um, you know you're welcome to be part of the chat. Uh, if you have any questions, please put it in chat. And also, um, Thundercracker Thursday. That means Bullseye Bonus Island. Let the window spin and hit your target. Information spinning. You know that lightning bully slap nut is out get me and that lightning will not strike I can guarantee it it was close last time but let's see what happens when the third slap nut brother comes after me so and I hope you enjoyed the pressure luck episodes I pulled up there so it seems like to me but this time around did pretty good even though I ended up in second place I believe in the first game on uh, the 80s version and then I ended up uh, playing the uh... oh excuse me please look uh and end up winning the second game to 2019 version. I'm really excited. So, I'll see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful night. God bless and peace, love, and bless out.